I want to briefly highlight four lessons that we think we've learned, that you have taught us, that point the way to improve leadership. First, I'm going to briefly talk about the state district system, the role of the district, the role of the principal, and fourth, what we know about better principal training. You'll hear more about these four topics today. If you've looked at your conference agenda, you know the breakout sessions are all around these issues, and I hope you get to many of them. And there's lots more that you can read in your conference materials. So let me give you a quick preview. First, building a cohesive system of education policy from states to districts to schools actually has important payoffs. Rand's confirmed it. And while this sounds log logical, such coordination has not historically been the norm. There's often tension, I don't need to tell all of you in this room, there's often tension between state and district leaders. And uh, several years into this work, I was talking to a, a school superintendent of a major district in the country, and I kind of asked him, you know, what could the state do that would really help you? And the answer was, stay out of my way. And, you know, equal opportunity questioner, I then was talking uh, to a state chief and asked the same question, and I got the response, just follow the rules. So we know that there's tension, and we don't always see eye to eye at our different levels. But RAND research that's going to be shared with you today actually tells a surprisingly different and positive story. It finds that if we can truly, at the state and district level, align our policies, school principals, the actors in our play, report greater job satisfaction, relatively strong authority over hiring teachers, which is critically important to them, and the ability to devote more of their time to improving instruction. Second, district leadership is incredibly important especially in turning around low-performing schools. I know that you know this. Only district leaders, only district leaders, can direct additional funds and staffing to the highest need schools and create incentives to help attract and retain those staff. Only district leaders can reorganize the central office to better support principals in their learning improvement agenda. Only district leaders can provide reliable assessments of principals to help them focus on what matters most. And they can free up time for those principals to focus on instruction. For, an exa for example, an evaluation of a program that began in Kentucky um, that's now being tried in nine states found that on average, principals with school administrative managers, known affectionately to many of us as SAMs, um, are spending nearly five hours more a week on instruction. Third, at the school level, research we've commissioned, and as you saw in the film last night, there are virtually no documented instances of troubled schools being turned around without a powerful leader. One of the things someone said to me last night that wasn't on the film is that when Carrie left Harvard Park the following year, their scores dropped by something like 35%. Leadership matters. One reason is that a good principal is the single most important determinant of whether a school can attract and retain high-quality teachers. And the principal is uniquely positioned to ensure that excellent teaching spreads beyond isolated classrooms in the building. To us, the bottom line seems to be that investments in good principals are a particularly cost-effective way to improve teaching and leading. Finally, We've learned a lot about how to do a better job of training principals in the first place. And when we do a better job of training them, they actually do better in their schools. A 2007 Stanford study we commissioned identified the characteristics of exemplary training programs. And I know that many of you have been working with those criteria. Great. And earlier this year, an evaluation of the New York City Leadership Academy, which incorporates those criteria, demonstrated how high-quality training can really pay off. The evaluation found that the academy graduates who were placed in extremely low-performing schools 
improve their school's academic performance at higher rates than other principals in English language arts and at comparable rates in math, even though they were coming into schools that had a much steeper rate of decline. So if we do a better job preparing our principals, they'll do a better job for us in leading student improvement. States and universities and even school districts who can use their consumer purchasing power when they hire can help make these characteristics of effective programs the rule rather than the exception. In fact, in the 16 states that Wallace works most closely, more than 200 university-based leadership preparation programs have either been forced to improve or have shut down. And we know that 24 of the programs that you have created, either in district university partnerships or district run, 24 of the programs that you've created have now been ranked as highly high quality programs. So these four lessons about the state district role, the state district system, the role that a district can play in making sure schools really work, the incredibly powerful and important role principals can play, and what we can do at the university and outside level to prepare people better, um, point a clear roadmap for action steps that states and districts and policymakers and practitioners can take to spread these more effective practices that we have all now developed working together for so long. And we hope that this conference helps you take steps in that direction.